Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here is your latest integral of the day. And we have an improper integral that goes from zero to infinity of e to the negative square root of y dy. And as I promised, this one's a little bit more manageable than the most recent integral of the day. So pause the video if you want to give it a try on your own. It takes a couple integration techniques and then a good old L'Hopital's rule at the end. All right, so jumping in, since it's an improper integral, the very first thing we need to do is replace this upper limit with the dummy variable and rewrite the entire integral as a limit. So we're going to rewrite this as the limit as t approaches infinity. And now we'll have our integral go from 0 to t. Integrand is still neg e to the negative square root of y dy. And then from here, you have to think to yourself, hmm, Okay, I can't directly anti-differentiate e to the negative square root of y, and hopefully you remember doing an integral similar to this before. What we're gonna do is use a substitution first, and then we're gonna have to do integration by parts. So since I know I'm gonna do by parts later, I don't wanna use the variable u for my substitution. I also can't use t, oh my goodness. And right now, everything's in terms of y. So let's use x for our substitution. I'm gonna let x equal the square root of y. If you want, you could have put the negative with it. I'm just opting not to. And then now we need to find dy. But before I differentiate both sides, I like to square them. And then it makes the process a little bit easier. So x squared is equal to y. Now let's differentiate both sides. So 2x dx is equal to dy. Perfect. So I'm going to replace all of dy in the integral with 2x dx. And let's rewrite what we have. So you still got the limit as t goes to infinity. And then now these limits of integration change. Oh, yes, they do. 0 and t. 0 and t belong to the variable y. And my new limits need to be in terms of x. And x is the square root of y. So the square root of 0, that's still 0. And then the upper limit becomes square root of t. All right? Good. And then now, instead of e to the negative square root of y, we have e to the negative x. And then as we just discussed, dy gets replaced with 2x dx. How are we doing? Well, hopefully now it's more evident that we need to use integration by parts. We have a polynomial, 2x, times an exponential function. So let's go ahead and set it up u is going to be 2x, and then dv will be e to the negative x dx. And then take the derivative, so du would be 2dx, and then anti-differentiate v is negative e to the negative x. Beautiful. Now make sure you're still writing lim every step of the way. So limit t approaches infinity. We have u times v. So that's going to be negative 2x e to the negative x. And that's going to get evaluated from 0 to square root of t. That's outside the integral already. And then minus integral 0 to square root of t, we have v du. But since there's another negative here, that'll switch this to be positive mm -hmm, 2 e to the negative x dx. Close it up. Good. Now, hopefully this antiderivative is no big deal. Just because there's a negative, I'm going to add a minus sign when I find the antiderivative. So we've got limit t goes to infinity. Let me write this as negative 2x e to the negative x. And then the antiderivative here is going to be negative 2 e to the negative x. And all of this will evaluate from 0 to the square root of t now. Okay. All right, just a couple things to clean it up before we start evaluating. I want to take out the two that both of them have in common. And then also, I don't love that these are both negative. So I can make them both positive if I flip the limits of integration. You don't have to do this, but it's just going to be a little nicer to not have so many minus signs floating around on the paper. So I'm taking the two out, and then now everybody's positive. x e to the negative x plus e to the negative x but these guys flip. So zero is now my upper limit. Rad t is the lower limit. Okay, now let's evaluate at zero and then 
square root of t. So we have 2 times 0 times e to the 0 plus e to the 0 minus, that's the upper limit, lower limit, square root of t, e to the negative square root of t plus e to the negative square root of t. Boom. How are we doing? Oh, good. All right. So here, this is just going to be 0 plus 1. So this is all just 1. And then now the other two terms are going to take a little bit more work. So let me rewrite them. It's always a good idea when you have limits. Don't leave any terms with negative exponents. You want to rewrite them in the denominator with the positive exponent. It helps you evaluate the limit better. So this is going to be 2 times 1 minus. Now watch how I'm going to rewrite this guy, okay? It's going to be square root of t over e to the square root of t. And then minus, the last one's just 1 over e to the square root of t. Good? All right. Now, as t goes to infinity, the square root of t is also going to infinity. So over here we have our numerator going to infinity. And then e raised to something getting very, very large is also getting very, very large. Oh no, that's an indeterminate form of the type infinity over infinity. So we're going to work on this term off to the side in just a moment, but we can apply L'Hopital's rule, thankfully. Now, this last term here, the numerator is just a constant. And then, like we said, since t is going to infinity, square root of t is going to infinity, e raised to something getting large is getting very, very large also. So the denominator is going to infinity. And remember, anytime you have a constant over a denominator getting very, very large in the positive or negative direction, that whole term is going to go to zero. So that's done. We don't need L'Hopital's rule for that guy. But we do need it for this second term here. So, just a little aside, we're going to look at the limit. As t goes to infinity, the square root of t over e to the square root of t. And we already established the numerator is going to infinity, so is the denominator. So we are in the clear to apply L'Hopital's rule. So now we have the limit as t approaches infinity. Derivative of square root of t in the numerator is 1 half t to the negative 1 half, which is 1 over 2 rad t. And then derivative of e to the rad t in the denominator. Well, derivative of e to the something is e to the something. And then we do the chain rule. We multiply by the derivative of the something, in this case rad t. And this just is working out so beautifully because now the 1 over 2 rad t's cancel out. And all I have is the limit as t goes to infinity of 1 over e to the rad t. And as we talked about, the denominator is going to infinity. So that means the whole term here, this limit, is going to 0. Beautiful. So then you can just come back in here and say, well, now I know this term goes to 0, as we've shown. So all that's left is 2 times 1, which is 2. Wow. And what do we care about this number? Nothing particular about the fact that it's 2, only that it's finite. So this limit exists as a finite number, which tells me the improper integral is convergent. It was so funny. The one I did the other day, it diverged. And someone commented, divergent equals sucks. And it's true. I don't know. For me, at least, I'm always a little disappointed when the integral diverges. Not that there's, you know really any implication when we're just solving arbitrary improper integrals but it, for some reason I do have a little bit more of like a satisfactory celebratory feeling when the integral converges I don't know if you guys are the same so let me know I put a poll up on my Instagram someone else said also it's annoying how the majority of the time we never know whether or not th what the sum of an infinite series is we just can say whether it's convergent or divergent which is true too. I think we should make like a list of frustrations and grievances collectively and laugh about them together and commiserate. But anyways, that concludes the integral of the day. I hope you enjoyed it. Give the video a thumbs up. Comment down below, were you able to solve it on your own? I think this one was more manageable than the one I did the other day. The limit wasn't so spicy. And then also let me know what other kinds of integrals you're looking for. If you're in Calc 2, that's kind of what I'm focusing on right now since I teach students who are in Calc 1, 2, 3 mostly. 
And stay tuned. I have a lot of more new content coming your way. Also follow me on Instagram and TikTok, Math with Professor V. Love you all. Thank you so much for your support. Bye-bye.